Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, and of course, that's fractions. And uh, I know a lot of you right now are saying, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, please stick to math and not to comedy. Your jokes aren't too funny. Hey, listen, I got to try. You know, we are learning this stuff, so if we're going to learn about fractions, let's try to have fun. And uh, your attitude when uh, learning math really does go a long way. So, okay, so if you're going to learn this stuff, let's try to enjoy it. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you spend a couple minutes with me on uh, how to re uh, reduce fractions, you'll be able to reduce any fraction you may encounter. So we're going to do these particular problems here in a second. And uh, most of you probably can do uh, this uh, fraction problem right here or reduce this fraction. Uh, but here's the thing. I want you to answer this question and put your answer into the comment section if you can think about it for a second. If you were explaining to someone, maybe a younger brother and sister or something, and you had to give them a procedure or a little mini lesson on how to reduce fractions, how would you explain it? One of the hallmarks in terms of uh, whether you know something, whether you've really mastered something, is your ability to teach it. Okay, so just think about it. Whatever you know super good, you probably can teach it really well because you're excited about it. You're like, oh, this is what you do. You do it this way, da, 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 da. You know everything about that. So when you think about how to reduce fractions, how would you teach this to someone else? Okay, I'll write those steps down into the comment section. It would be a couple of quick steps, and then we'll kind of see how your thinking is. And, of course, we're going to talk about all this uh, and, and a little bit more in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you're having a difficult time in mathematics, it doesn't have to be this way. I've been teaching math for decades, and I really like to think of myself as someone who explains math, not teaches it. You know, when you, we think about um, learning math, we oftentimes feel like you have, you know, you're learning from a textbook, and hopefully you got some uh, pretty enthusiastic teachers out there that can teach in a clear and understandable way. But over decades of teaching mathematics, that's how I teach. I break things down in super clear, easy to understand ways so anyone and any anyone and everyone can learn it. So long as you're willing to put in the work do your part and study, I think I have the right instruction for you. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, definitely check out my math help program if you need extra support in your math class. Now, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, maybe um, a teacher certification exam. If you're not taking one of these tests now, you very well may be taking one in the uh, future, especially if you have any intentions on uh, going to college, going to vocational school, going to graduate school, whatever the case is, you're gonna run into one of these tests prep so I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, definitely check out my homeschool math courses. I was just uh, recently voted number one for middle and high school mathematics by a major uh, national homeschool publication. Very excited about that. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But I'm here to tell you that uh, you're not going to um, get good grades in mathematics if you don't learn how to take great math notes. So start improving your notes and everything will start getting better for you. And uh, with that being said, let's get into fractions. Okay, so we're going to talk about these problems here in just one moment. But again, how do you reduce fractions? Most of you are like, I can reduce a fraction. Great. Okay. What is the procedure? Think about that. Put it. Put that into the comment section, and uh, let's talk about that procedure right now. Okay. And most of you, if you couldn't really find the words to describe what you're doing, well, here's what you're doing. Let's take a look at two fractions that uh, pretty much all of us can reduce. So let's take a look at 10 over 20. So if we reduce this fraction, what does it mean to reduce? By the way, we're talking about reduce. Uh, basically, that just means to simplify, all right? Simplify, write that in its most simplest form. So if we have 10 over 20, okay, this uh, fraction right here, that's the same as the fraction 1 half, okay? So what would you rather write, 10 over 20 or 1 half? Think about it. Do you want to write the fraction 1,000 over 2,000? No, that's just like too much work, right? I'd rather just write the fraction 1 half. So uh, when you... Um, reduce a fraction, you simplify it. And this is not an optional thing as well. Most math teachers will take points off if you don't fully reduce and simplify your fraction. So you need to be able to, uh, to do this and not be like, well, yeah, I just don't feel like reducing. Well, no, that's not the case. Okay. You got to reduce, you got to simplify. Okay. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So we have 10 
over 20. Well, what you're really doing is you are uh, looking at the factors, okay? Factors, all right? We're looking at the factors of both the numerator and the denominator. Some of us are kind of thinking about this uh, in our brains. You're like, okay, I know this goes into that so many times. But really, technically, what you are doing is looking at the factors. So let's look at 10. 10 is the same thing as what? Well, it's the same thing as 2 times 5. 2 times 5, this is the factor of 10. These are factors of 10. These are actually the prime factors. I could throw in 1 in there, but that's, you know, we don't really have to write 1. So, well, let's write 1 anyway. So we have 1 times 2 times 5. These are the prime factors of 10. In other words, I can't break this down any further. So let's go ahead and break down um, 20. Okay, so 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5 or two times two, that's four times five. So here's the prime factors of 20, one times two times two times five, okay? All right, so at this case, we're like, all right, so here is 10, here is 20. So what you uh, learned how to do, but well, you probably don't know how to put this in words, is you want to cross cancel like factors. So I see a five up here and a five down here. I can eliminate these like factors one for one. And so I have a 2 here, and I have a 2 there, so I can eliminate these, and that's and what's left is uh, the simplified fraction. So it's just 1 up in the numerator, okay? And then I have 1 times 2, which, of course, is 2 down in denominator. So we have 10 over 20. It simplifies into 1 half, okay? So that's technically what you're doing. Now, a lot of you are like saying, well, I didn't do it that way. You kind of said to yourself, 10 goes into 22, so really what you were thinking is like, oh, I can write 10 as 1 times 10, and 20 I can write as 2 times 10. So you, uh, instead of doing prime factors, you just kind of broke it up into some factors. And that's perfectly fine as well. Bigger factors, you can, if you recognize that, that's what you're doing. You're like, oh, 10 goes into 10. These 10s cross cancel, so I'm left with 1 half, and there you go. Okay, so that's what we're doing when we're reducing or simplifying fractions. We're factoring the numerator and denominator and then cross-canceling like um, uh, factors. So let's take a look at this problem, 4 twelfths. So if I was to ask you to simplify that, what is the answer? And if you said it is one-third, okay, the reduced fraction, you would be correct. Very good. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So 4 we can do it this way. We know that 4 goes into 12, 3. Okay, but if I wanted to do it with prime factors, 4 is 1 times 2 times 2. Okay, these are the prime factors of 4. I can't factor this any further than that. And then 12 is 6 times 2, right? Or 4 times 3. So that's going to be 2 times 2. Of course, we have a 1 there. So that's 4 uh, times 3. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so I have a 2 and 2, and these 2s can cross cancel. Remember, it's 1 for 1, so 1, 2 can take out another 2. This 2 can take out only that 2, so I'm left with 1 and 3, 1 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator, and that is 1 third. Okay? Now, again, if you're like, oh, well, 4 is a factor of 12, and you're like, this is the same thing as 1 times 4, and then uh, 12 is 3 times 4, if you recognize that, these are still factors. You're still doing the same thing. It's just that you're not breaking this down to prime factors. So you take a, uh, these fours, they cross cancel, and you're left with one third. Okay, so that's how you reduce and simplify uh, fractions. We're going to take a look at some variable fractions here in a second. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, these problems right here. Now, 30 over 50. Most of you have been taught. You're like, oh, I have two zeros here. I just cross cancel. So the answer is three fifths. Okay. Uh, that is absolutely correct. Okay. But what's going on here? 30. All right. Let's write this out though. 30 over 50. If you didn't know that, you want to break this up in factors. So this is three times 10. Okay. Well, anything that ends in a zero is divisible by 10. So 10 is going to be a factor. And then I have five times 10. Now I don't have to prime factor all the time. If I can see a bigger factor, uh, go ahead and just do that. Select those bigger bigger factors and then kind of whittle this thing down. So 10 and 10, I could cross cancel those and the three and five are prime numbers. And there you go, that's three fifths. Okay, so pretty easy problem. Uh, so let's move on to a problem now that it involves variables. So this is basically gonna use the same concepts as numbers. Let's break this up into prime factors. So four times X, four is the same thing as two times two. 
and then we have x. So this is uh, 2 times 2 times x. That's 4x. And then 10 will be 2 times 5. And uh, that's 10x squared. So it's going to be 2 times 5 times an x times an x. Okay, so now we can cross cancel. Like factors 2 and 2. Okay, these will go away right there. And then look over here at the x's, okay? I have an x here and I have two x's, but I can only cross cancel one x for one x, so uh, these x's here can cross cancel. And what's left, okay? Well, I have this two fifths and this x down in uh, the denominator, so our answer will be two over five x, okay? This is the correct answer. Okay, now if you got that right, excellent. Okay, it shows me that you are paying attention and you're understanding this. And let's finish up with one more problem here. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to really practice this. These are some pretty basic problems, but let's suppose I said uh, reduce or simplify this fraction right here. Now, uh, we're dealing with bigger numbers, 126 and 300. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do I factor this? Okay, you're like 126. You know what? The best thing to do is just take a number that you know will go into 126. So take that. Let's divide it by 2. You're like, oh, 300. I can divide that by 2. So just start breaking this thing down. So 2 times 63 is 126 times y cubed. So that's the factors of the numerators. We'll just keep whittling this thing down. And then 300 is the same thing as 2 times 150. So I know it can break up 126. Uh, I could divide that by 2, and I know 150 is divisible by 2. So that's the way you want to start when you're div uh, dealing with a, um, a fraction that you're not quite sure what the prime factors are. You can just start whittling it down. So this is going to be 300 y squared, so that's 2 times uh, 150 times y squared. Okay, so at this point, I can eliminate the 2s, and that leaves me with 63 over 150, and I got y cubed times y squared. So now I have to think about these numbers. Or can I break these down any further? Well, be careful with numbers like this, 63, for example. Uh, this is where knowing the divisibility rules, okay, if you don't have a calculator, comes in handy. What, uh, Like if the sum of the numbers are divisible by uh, 3, okay? So if I have, let's say, uh, 12, okay? So is that number divisible by 3? In other words, does 3 go into uh, this number? Well, if the sum of the digits... Okay, is divisible by 3. So here, 1 uh, plus 2 is 3. 3 is, of course, divisible by 3. That's 1. That's 1 check. So 63, I can say, okay, what's the sum of the digits? That's 6 plus 3. That's 9. 9 is divisible by 3. So 63 should be divisible by 3, and it is. Okay, it's 3 times 21. So you're going to have to, again, know all this stuff that you learned, you know, in elementary school, uh, divisibility rules, you know, math is cumulative. So all that stuff that you learned way back in the fifth, sixth grade, seventh grade, you're like, yeah, I don't need that anymore because now I'm in like algebra. No, no, you need all that stuff, right? That's why you need to take notes and keep practicing this stuff. But uh, 63, we could break up as three times 21. And then 150, I'm like, okay, that's going to be three times uh, 50. Like three times five is 15, or three times 50 is 150. So now I have these common factors, three and three, I can get rid of. And then I have 21 and 50, and these uh, can't go any further. Although I can break this up as 7 times 3, uh, these factors you won't find in 50. So this is as far as we could take this particular numeric fraction, but I'm left with my y's now. Okay, so we're not quite done yet. i got to deal with the variables. So 1y, okay, this y could take out this y, and this y could take out this y. So we just cross-cancel. So I have 1y left in the numerator. So our final answer will be 21y over 50, okay? So this is how you do a problem like this. Some of you might be able to just like factor all the numerator and denominator and then get right to this answer. But if you have to kind of take multiple steps, that's fine uh, as well, okay? Especially if you're dealing with bigger numbers. But again, simplifying fractions, reducing fractions. If you left your final answer like this on a test or a quiz, uh, your teacher will probably take off some points, okay? And they're like, hey, no, you need to simplify. So remember, simplifying and reducing fractions is not an optional thing, okay? So don't feel like, yeah, I'll just leave my answers like this and no one's going to bother me. Well, that's not going to be the case, okay? So remember, how do you reduce fractions? You um, Hopefully your procedure that I asked you to put into the comment section is, number one, you... Uh, factor completely the numerator, you factor completely the denominator, and you cross-cancel 
uh, like factors between the numerator and denominator. What's left over is your simplified fraction. Okay, so hopefully this video was a good little reminder on how to reduce and simplify uh, fractions. And if that is the case, uh, and it definitely helped you out, well, then go ahead and help uh, me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. I make it for you, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.